Saturday, 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 Saturday at Game On. Um, I'm currently in the middle of a game of Struggle of uh, Struggle of Empires, which I'm really hating. So it's not a good way to spend six hours, but sometimes it happens. Um, Cascadia. This is first victory. This is uh, finally getting this to the table. It looks really good on the table. Down to zero. Okay. I won. Napoleonic Tactical. I might revisit that at some point. Yeah. Here's Struggle of Empires. Okay. Uh, that was your. Has some good ideas, but um, it's, it's super swingy and random, and so it's really hard to have fun with it when you're trying to make a plan, and the game is all about planning. Terraforming Mars. Virgin Queen again here at this table today. They've been playing it for all day, basically. Uh, Triumph and Tragedy happening over here. Looks vaguely historical. <laughs> At least this particular iteration of the game. Uh, I could go to a remnant. Not of a two five three. Stalingrad forty two. Yep. Nope. Big undertaking. Yep. Yep. What do you want to do? Time for trumpet still going. You guys are animals. No, no surrender. <laughs> Star Wars Outer Rim. Game I wanted to play and have not yet been able to. Uh, Total or Krieg still going today. More Twilight Imperium 4. Oh, you guys are about to play Twilight Imperium, huh? We're gonna do it. Oh man, do you need more players? Oh, you've already set up the map, huh? Um, I love Twilight Imperium. Do you know the rules? Uh, not I've, of the third edition, not the fourth edition. So there's some slight changes, but. If you, I don't know if there's any real big differences because we use all the. I mean, if you really want to play, I mean, you can play if everybody is just starting out. Abby, we're just still going over kind of the rules okay. and the basics. Okay, well, um, I'm, we're we're still in this middle, the middle of this game that I'm like so disengaged from. So uh, they're gonna need me to like go back and finish my turns and shit. So I will. You guys go ahead. I'll, okay. Uh, OCS Smolensk still going. Looks like the Germans have pushed all the way to the east. This is the bonus. Stellar Horizons, a game that I've wanted to play for a long time. It looks really pretty epic. Lots of planets. It's a game about space exploration. It's a compass game. I've thought about picking it up a couple times, but it's a, I want to try it first. Uh, this is Nemesis, a game I have not heard of. The minis look really nice, though. It looks like sort of like an alien style sci fi game. Complete Ameritrash. Let's go downstairs. We'll see what's in the downstairs room. ASL Championships continuing. The ASL room. So much quieter down here. <laughs> above and below. Wingspan. Oh, wingspan. There we go. Nice. Only above. <laughs> the only below is when they're being buried underneath. Uh, Every time I see this game on the table, I want to eat the eggs because they look like the little milk chocolate ones from Easter. Yeah. <laughs> And last time I checked down here, there was a game of Conquest and Consequence happening. What do we got? Oh, uh, did we finish up? Who won? Who won with the asterisk? Uh, the dice won. Ah, the Japanese. <laughs> the dice won, that's right. Pinsir attack and took a second guy. Ah, uh, nice. Yeah, but we figured out how the Soviets can win. I, I won as the Soviets. How to work? How to work? Yeah, how yeah. did you win? Um, Take, so, uh, this and this? Uh, just win the proxy war. Um, so once I won the proxy war with the communist Chinese, then you're, you're taking this. Yep. Um, two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I never took. I never took Nanking. King. I took. Uh, I took Mukden, and I won. What's the other victory conditions? There's tw oh, 25 points. I won by. I won with the 25 point wow. victory as the Soviets. Wow. wow. Really? <laughs> yeah. Because what happened in our game is turn one, the Japanese launched their surprise attack. They managed to bottle. They managed to bottle up the uh, the allies, and they had a blockade all around the west coast of the U.S. So the allies c could not get off of the mainland. We had Japanese units walking through Canada and marching into the heartland, and uh, and that allowed me to just kind of uh, sweep up yeah. over in China. Because they had spent all. We ne United States never went to war. Always fighting in China. Yeah, well, you did at the very end. Yeah, yeah, and then, but then the, uh, no, I never declared war. 
Oh, no, I, the, and then the British finally came in, and then mm. I was going to declare war, but all these mountains yeah. make it hard to yeah. get over there, so I would have had to have declared war, and then it would have been like two turns until I got in there, so. Yep. <laughs> but it was a completely different game yeah. from the first game, because the United States never went to war, no Pacific yeah. problems at all, everything That's was pretty China. interesting, pretty and interesting. Then, you know, he attacked, he attacked through here, Japan came acro across into here. And then once they established yeah. that bridgehead, then he brought it's, a whole bunch yeah. of guys and yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like and it's like it was like really, this sucks. <laughs> and it's weird. He had a bunch of guys in Tashkent, mm -hmm. and he just never moved them to try and relieve the. Anyways, well, he was crippled on cars by that point. Yeah, like his production was down to like three total. But, um, do you have a do you have Watergate up here? Oh, uh, I didn't bring it today. Oh, son of a yeah, man. sorry. Are you looking for a game? Yeah, we were gonna. I was gonna. Jeff and I were gonna play a, a game. I wanted to show. Someone them. has it here. You might be able to play their copy. Some guys upstairs. Yeah. Because they're not playing it right now. Yeah. I'll show you three hundred. So of the three pyramids right here that you have, um, you're gonna need to um, pick. Um, what game is this? Kemet. Kemet. Oh, is this the new version? Yep. Oh, very cool. So everybody should have some. Uh, little Kemet is a classic. Never played it, but it looks really cool. And same with Kekladies. All right, well, that's the downstairs room. Um, I'll check in again shortly. All right, well, Saturday evening game. Uh, ended up playing Granada, Last Stand of the Moors, 1482-1492. If you've been watching uh, for the last little while, you've seen me talk about this game. This was super epic, super thrilling, uh, a wild back and forth uh, between the Christians of Spain and the Muslims of Granada. Um, I was playing the Christians, who are the white pieces here, and uh, it was it was super tense. Um, I got a lot of really good success early on. I was able to drive down this highway towards um, towards uh, Malaga. Um, I actually captured Malaga at one point, but I basically split the Muslim forces in two. I had a string of victories. Um, I was capturing castles and watchtowers. I looked totally in control of the game. I had I had beaten back this Western Muslim army. Um, Isabella was over here. She didn't even really get involved. Ferdinand was leading. I had, I, had, I had all the momentum with me. I managed to force him out of Granada here and put it under siege. And then he responded. Uh, and on that turn, I put it under siege. I decided to go for the killing blow all over the map as much as I could. I came down. I took Marabella um, with, the, with the, the remnants of this stack here. They kind of marched along the coast. But I took, it, I took Marabella. Or Marbella. And over here, I decided, I was like, okay, if I'm going to go for it and go for the auto win by taking Granada, I'm going to try and put as much pressure as possible. So I sailed a fleet here out of Cartagena with Isabella at its command. And they were sailing just fine, just fine. And then they got to the port here off the coast of Almeria. And a Muslim fleet spotted them. And in the naval combat that ensued, sank the entire Christian fleet that was going to land here at Adra and take this resource point. Not only did that wipe out Isabella's army, but it killed Isabella. She's at the bottom of the Mediterranean right now. So that history was not preserved. And that actually gave the Muslim player pretty much total control of the eastern end uh, of Spain, which is pretty scary for a little while. Um, he had just recently uh, sent some of his um, troops from Iran up to the coast, so I wasn't too worried about a counterattack. But losing Isabella was 50% to an auto win for the Muslim player. If all he had to do was kill Ferdinand, at the same time, he collapsed really hard on Granada itself and, and Alhambra Castle as I had it under siege with a massive army from three different angles. We had a battle. The army was basically completely wiped out. He had full control of the center of his territory again, and I was starting to sweat it. After that, he moved this portions of this big army to north to try and uh, take back some of these watchtowers I had taken at Huelma, and I was afraid that he was going to attack me further north into Spain. Another big portion of that army, as you can see with many of his leaders, in fact, all of his leaders that he had left on the map, came out to the west and started to put the pressure on um, Ferdinand. We had a big battle. Ferdinand lost, had to retreat to this castle here. He then pressed the, the attack and uh, forced Ferdinand to retreat. Um, out of this castle, he ended up capturing it. What space is this? This is uh, Akiha. Um, it forced Ferdinand to retreat. And I was, uh, after that first big battle, Ferdinand was the only survivor of that battle. He was the only one who managed to escape with no casualties. Uh, the rest of his army was annihilated by this Muslim force. So he retreated back here to safety. And at that point, I was like, oh, man, this is going to be really bad. I did, manage to, um, I did manage to bring my sort of reserve army that I had kept up in this area. I managed to win a battle and bring it down back to Alhambra. 
uh, in Granada. And at that point, there weren't many Muslim units left on this side of the map, as you can see. And this was the force that ended up winning the game for the Christians. It was, uh, what's the Red House? The Red House in this game is Castile, I believe. It is, oh, hold on, I'm looking at the cards. Of course, of course, the cards are very beautiful. Yes, Castile. So it was a Castilian army under this sub-commander from Leon. And uh, I think it was Leon. Uh, no, Aragon, excuse me, Leon's the white one. So some Leonese artillery, commander from Aragon, and a Castilian army and some crossbowmen who ended up taking the, the fort here. And that's an auto victory for the Christians, conquering and reuniting the Spanish peninsula under a Christian rule. So though there is no Queen Isabella, which probably means no Christopher Columbus, right? Or who was, no, he was, was it Portugal or Isabella who sent Columbus? Isabella. So probably no Christopher Columbus. So we might have a little bit of a delay on the new world discovery, but it was a really great game. Super thrilling back and forth. Early in the game, I actually managed to um, capture Boabdil and get this army. So this is an army that the Christian player can get if they can wipe out Boabdil's army, who's a Muslim commander, starts somewhere up here. And sort of the early victories in the game, I managed to get this army and cause some havoc over here. And that was pretty fun to get some, uh, some bonus pieces. This is a really great game. Um, super rules, lightweight, but um, really tense and obviously no dice. It's all card hand management, just like Seki Gahara. Highly, highly recommend. I know I've said it a bunch, but highly, highly recommend um, you check out Granada Last Stand of the Moors if you get a chance. I think one of my favorite games uh, that's come out uh, recently, and it's just very, very tense and uh, a lot of, lot of strong decision making uh, involved in it. So, yeah. All right, fresh off my victory in Granada, last end of the Moors. Might be the first game that I have won this weekend, potentially. Time for trumpets still. Oh, it looks like they're breaking it down. Time for trumpets. Germans managed to extend that bulge about that far. That's the end. Yes. Take five days of them playing. Then you can attempt to trumpet with somebody else. SBQR going here, Great Battles of History. Syndicate. How is it? Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's some really neat ideas, but it, it could have. I think it suffers from lack of energy. Okay. Yeah. It looks cool. It is. It is cool. It is fun. There's some good like good tension, but then the wording gets confusing. We just have to mm. kind of come up with house rules. Mm, okay. Agreement. Okay. Like our first time playing, we're coming up with. Oh, it doesn't say what to do here. Uh, Let's just do this. Yeah. Okay. Edge so. cases. It could have been better. Okay. <laughs> that was what we read the review on Board Game TV. It could be better. It could be yeah. better. That's well, the, that's the new phrase for the day. Today seems to be the day where people play games that they're really not happy about because I spent most of my day playing Struggle of Empires and never again. <laughs> conquest and consequence. Conquest and consequence. consequence it's, yes. it's been a very big day for block games today. I just wiped out Hawaii. Oh, nice. Are you playing the Japanese? Yep. Ah, oh, very good. Yeah, he's playing the Americans. There's something wrong here if you wipe out Hawaii. Yeah, this, this is all the Americans right there. Well, the Soviets could have done it, maybe. <laughs> With my one Navy. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. Good stuff. What year are you guys in? 1940. 1940. June 7th, 1940. A day <laughs> we had some door prizes given away today. Uh, looks like Red Flag over Paris got played just now. Uh, actually, we did FUBU. Oh, FUBU. Oh, how was it? From Finland. Yeah, yeah. From uh, uh, They do 1815. They do yeah. the uh, Helsinki. Helsinki. I picked up Helsinki. From... No, I can see why it's good. It's fast. Yeah, awesome. And a lot of the soccer games get way too... They're cool, but they get very lengthy. Yeah. yeah. And this looks good. Awesome. Are you about to play Red Flag? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to take a good look at it. Uh, if you want to play it, I'll play it with you. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I might. Hello. More euros over there. Ah, yes, this game again. Well, you guys are only in the second era. Almost done. Teaching new people again. Uh, uh, okay, good times. Yes, well, you guys are marathoning this game twice today. is pretty impressive, I will say. It's not that bad. It's a great game. Uh, we've got uh, looks like true detective stories happening over here. What's the game here? Toontown. Toontown. Sorry, yes. Toontown. Very cool. Looks neat. What else is going on? The OCS guys were, I think, almost done. They're trying to get to the final turn. I think they're almost there. Uh, yeah. The, I mean, look at the Germans have pushed so far deep into Russia there. 
still going at Stellar Horizons, which is pretty crazy. I really don't know. Wow. Sounds like they're almost at the end of that one. Total Krieg still going. Yep. Yikes. Not good. Not good. It is largely delaying the inevitable. Well, then who controls Paris right now? He does. He does. He does. So he's going to back out of it and nuke it? Well, actually, no, no, you're going to nuke Paris. No, he would nuke Paris. Yeah. Checking out the downstairs rooms for the Saturday night walk around. Aha! Fire in the lake. First coin game I've seen at the convention. Uh, we're playing first edition rules. <laughs> so we're getting wiped out by airstrikes. Oh. But there's always more where that came from. <laughs> Who are you playing? I'm playing the VC. Ah, nice. We're doing okay. Nice. I want to play this game more than I have. Yeah. <clears throat> Down the hall. Is ASL still happening? Sure is. Ooh, we got multiple games happening in this room down here. It looks like Terraforming Mars just wrapped up over here. Yeah. They're putting it all away. My arm. All right, I'm gonna build a high quality arm. Okay. What game is this? Frankenstein, the abomination. Uh, abomination, heir of Frankenstein. Ah. Uh -huh. All right. That so, makes sense why he's building an arm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it's a uh, six. Um... Oh, someone was playing Fox in the Forest, one of the best trick-taking games ever, and it's two-player. How does that work, you ask? Ingeniously, two-player trick-taking game. It's so good. It's kind of you're you're kind of betting on your own success or failure. Oop, I'm gonna pop in here, see what's going on. Kemet's still happening. Mm -hmm. yep. It's another game of Kemet. Oh, yeah. wow! There's people marathoning games back to back right now. Especially upstairs, <laughs> they're doing Struggle of Empires back to back. It's crazy. Okay, so I win. Yeah. All right, well, back uh, here on, I'm at home now on Saturday night, just spent most of the day at Game On. Um, I'm really starting to feel it. <laughs> uh, the exhaustion starting to set in after every night of, um, of the convention at this point. When your brain is running full cycles every day, all day for almost a week, it's like very exhausting. I, like, it's almost like I can feel myself burning calories and like, um, you know, you just like my brain all day is going at maximum capacity. And so uh, I get very hungry quickly and like I'm exhausted at the end of the day. So mental, don't ever let anyone tell you that hard mental work is not hard. Um, so just a quick update to conclude this video before I go. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be playing, uh, hopefully, Nicaea had a player drop out, but very excited for this. Kind of the rules I just read, they're a little abstract, but I, I kind of get what the game is doing. Um, so hopefully we can find at least four players to play this tomorrow. It's on the calendar. Um, there's at least one person who wants to play it with me, so we'll see that. Uh, and then we're going to be playing uh, Versailles 1919. Um, excited to get this to the table again. Played it a couple weeks ago. Enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to teach it to some folks. And uh, I like this a lot better than I like Pericles. Um, I would say of the three games in the system so far, Churchill is my favorite, then this one, uh, Pericles I did not like at all, and then the new one that's coming out, Triumvir, about the, the um, uh, Roman triumvirate during the end of the Republic, that one I'm very interested in. Um, this is what, uh, a game I picked up at Game On, uh, Helsinki 1918, this is from UP Games, it's, the, it's a Finnish company, they do, uh, they're most famous for publishing W1815, which was a really cool Napoleonics game, they kind of kicked off the, uh, the sort of like stationary uh, stationary unit uh, with card ability uh, genre that you've seen in things like uh, Freeman's Farm, the Great Sieges System from Worthington, Chancellorsville 1863, a bunch of other games. Anyways, there's a cat. Hello, cat. They've missed me because I've been gone most of the week. Um, but this game looks really cool. It's a three-player game um, from UP Games. It has wooden pieces. You can see here, uh, this is actually, it's one of those weird games. It's got eight pages of rules, so it's very simple, it looks like. Um, pieces are wood. You've got your units in these little long, like, sticks, and then you've got your HQs as cubes. Um, it's about the Finnish Civil War, but it's two maps, two full-size maps, and the hexes are huge. They're, like, this big. So um, I love three-player games. That's why I bought it. It's a cool topic. Um, it's the second three-player game on the Finnish Civil War of 1918, which is, like, crazy. Um, so uh, hopefully I can get this to the table at some point. It looks really fun. Um, you know, I might bring it to the convention tomorrow. See, see what happens with that. Um, and then finally, this right here, uh, I just figured I'd show this off. You can't design a game about medieval Byzantium without having a medieval Byzantine mace or a matsukion, as it is known in Greek. But this is an ash-hafted, hand-forged bronze mace or um, 
yeah, brass, excuse me, it's a brass mace head. Um, and not only is it extremely cool, um, it's super heavy on the end. You could like really crush someone with this. Um, but uh, great home defense weapon, you know, if uh, if anyone ever decides they want to break into my house because I'm going to keep this by my bed. Um, but a very cool prop as well um, for, you know, any medieval game that involves Eastern Rome. Um, but certainly something that I can bring around when I'm demoing Seljuk. Um, maybe not at the convention because I don't want to be carrying a weapon, but certainly at home and to show people. So very nicely made. Uh, this is a piece from Todd Cutler um, from Todd's workshop. He is uh, – you should go check out his website. I'll put it in the description. Um, he makes amazing stuff. I have a bunch of uh, medieval daggers from him. He hand forges everything to historical specification, um, and uh, he just makes some really nice stuff. This is by far one of the nicer pieces of his that I own. This is a really nicely made mace head. Um, and, uh, he's, and incidentally, he also did all of the weapons for the Witcher TV show. So he was the guy who, who made, uh, who made uh, and advised on most of their weaponry. So anyways, thought that was cool. Would show that to you. A uh, bunch of games on my table here that I've got to uh, clean up, but uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Um, and well, for you, it'll be tomorrow. For me, it's going to be today. Um, and, uh, that will be the last day of the convention at Game On. We're looking to close it out with some fun light stuff. And I've had just an awesome week playing games. Hope you've enjoyed the coverage. Um, I definitely would like to do this again for the next convention, which may be Game On in summer, where they're talking about doing a shorter weekend-long uh, Game On summer convention coming back. So anyways, thank you for watching. If you have been watching, I appreciate all your comments um, on the content and what you've liked. And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon.